Hey everybody, this is HKPSG1 Shooter. Thanks for tuning in. On this video, I'm going to show you how to save a couple of hundred dollars at the Steeler ship and change the water pump in your outboard. So stay tuned. First thing you need to get is the impeller and or water pump rebuild kit. Uh, since I operate my boat in a lot of sand and I'm kind of abusive on my stuff, I just go ahead and buy the entire kit because I know it's pretty much destroyed. You need to loosen the bolts that hold the lower unit onto the outboard. Uh, depending on manufacturer, the bolts will be in different locations. There may be different numbers of bolts, but the process is the same. As you can see here, once again, I'm using my hands for a hammer. Now you know why my hands always wear battle scars and look like they've been through a war zone. Anyhow, you want to go ahead and loosen all four of these bolts up. There's also a bolt underneath here. So you want to go ahead and take that zinc anode off of there to access the bolt underneath. Go ahead and remove this bolt. Now, go ahead and remove all but one of the bolts that hold the lower unit on to the outboard. Leave one in there to hold it in place. Now the next process, you need to unhook your shifter linkage. Basically, you only want to turn the adjustment nut on the top. Do not turn the nut at the bottom or you'll throw the timing out and your engine will not shift into gear. On anything above a 25 horse, generally this is where you disconnect the shifter linkage. On smaller engines, the linkage may be up inside of the cowling. Uh, consult your owner's manual. If you own an outboard, you should have an owner's manual. Now, I'm supporting this lower unit with my knee right here while I take this bolt out. Obviously on a larger outboard, you want to use something besides your knee because they get real heavy. Once you have the bolts out, pull the lower unit from the outboard. Now the next thing you want to do, especially if you operate your boat like me with a lot of sand, you want to go ahead and take a hose and flush all that sand out of there. There's no sense in putting this back together with brand new parts when it's still full of sand. Before you disassemble anything on your lower unit, take the hose wash the excess sand off of that. There's no sense working in grime and filth. Okay, with that done, the next step is to remove the bolts that hold the water pump housing to the lower unit. Next step, separate the housing from the lower unit. This is a no-no, using a pocket knife as a pry bar, I understand that. Pay particular attention to any small parts that may fall out, particularly the keyway. Also, pay particular attention to the rotation direction of the impeller as it comes out. This is very important that you orient the blades facing the same direction. Next separate the base plate from the lower unit. Then lay your parts out exactly as they come off the engine for future reference. Also, pay particular attention to that keyway. Don't lose it. It's very important. Now, we'll open up our new parts, starting with our base plate. Again, note the correct orientation of the parts before you begin assembling. Note the bolt patterns and how these parts are positioned. They only go one way. And there's nothing worse than putting it halfway together and realizing that it's wrong. So take the extra few seconds to make sure that you have the alignment and the orientation correct, including the gaskets.
Next step is to install the base plate with the gasket underneath it onto the lower unit. Next, you'll use a spacer washer which goes underneath the impeller and on top of the base plate. Install the impeller onto the shaft. Next, you'll take your keyway. You may need to use a knife or a punch, something small, to hold this keyway in place as you install the impeller. Make sure that you have the impeller locked onto the drive shaft. Install the other washer. Then, check your gasket that goes on top of the base plate. Then install it. Next, install the housing. As you press the housing down, you'll need to take a screwdriver or some similar object and twist the vanes into place as you apply slight pressure to the housing. Once you do it with all the vanes, the housing will snap into place. At that point, you want to line all your bolt holes up through your housing, your base plate, and your gaskets. Use a screwdriver or a punch to keep it lined up and get a bolt started. At each bolt hole, make sure you have everything lined up, then install a bolt. Once you have the bolts in, tighten them up. Now the next step is to reinstall the lower unit, guiding the drive shaft in place making sure the linkage slides up through there as such. Make sure that all your alignment pins are lined up and apply a slight pressure to close the gap. Hold steady pressure to it and get a couple of bolts started just to hold it together. Now again I'm supporting it with my knee while I get a bolt started. Once you get the bolt started go ahead and tighten them up. Be sure to reinstall this bolt here as well, and then reinstall the anode. After doing that, you need to reattach the shift linkage. Again, only turn the top nut. Do not adjust the bottom nut, or you will throw off your timing of your shift. You'll know you have it right when in neutral, the prop should spin freely like so. When you shift into gear and try to rotate the prop, you get a clicking in one direction and then the other direction the prop locks hard like so. So finally we want to test and make sure that it's installed correctly. Install our flush ears and the water hose. Turn the water on first before starting the engine. Do not start the engine without water running to it or you will destroy your water pump. Look for the indicator stream. Next, shift into gear and we have correct rotation of our propeller and forward. And we'll check reverse. Do not shift into reverse unless the engine is running or you can damage your ring and pinion gears in your lower unit. Good deal. That's fixed. Turn the engine off, then the water off. Always. Always in this order with an outboard. Okay, so while we have the boat out of the water, one more thing we want to do here is to change our lower unit lubrication. Go ahead and put you a dam of cat litter or absorbent around here because it's not a matter of if you'll spill it but when. Loosen the drain plug in the bottom then loosen the vent plug at the top. Then go ahead and remove the vent plug from the top. Then remove the drain plug at the bottom. Have your receptacle underneath to catch the oil and try not to get this stuff on you because it smells like dough urine. It really does. Then you want to use this little fitting here. I prefer this type of uh, pump for the lower unit grease. It's so much better than trying to hold that bottle there and squeeze it. 
you just thread that thing in, start pumping, then pay attention to the vent hole. When you see the oil come out of the top, you know it's full. Always fill from the bottom up, not the reverse. Once you see the oil come out, go ahead and put the plug back in and tighten it up. Then, with your plug in your hand, go ahead and remove the fitting and reinstall the plug at the bottom. Some oil will spill out and that's okay. Just don't take too long to get the plug back in or you'll lose a lot of oil. Then tighten them up. Store your receptacle for recycling at a later point. Throw out some absorbent. Clean it up later after it absorbs the oil that was spilled. Wipe off any excess off the lower unit. And that's about it. One other thing you might want to check is your zinc anodes on your boat as well as your bonding wires. Make sure those are good. If they look bad, eroded, replace them. So that's just one thing you can do to save a little money. Thanks for watching. This is HKPSG1 Shooter. Until next time, signing off.